Hello everyone and welcome to this Asana training video. In this video I want to guide you through how to set up a brand new Asana account. So starting from scratch, what are the things that you need to do first? What are the best projects to create? What's the difference between workspaces and organizations? And really for anyone that's first getting into Asana, what are the first few things that you should do? Before we get into that, if you do need any further help after this video, please feel free to use the link in the description of this video to uh, get on over to my website. You can book a complimentary 30 minute introductory call with me to learn more about my Asana consulting options. And if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, I'd love to have a chat and see how we can work together. Now, getting into this video. So first up, I've literally just created a brand new account. Um, with a personal Google address. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the difference between what's called a workspace and an organization. These are two different types of accounts you can set up. So by signing up with a personal email, I've been uh, set up as a workspace. And a workspace, you can see up the top right, mine's called Minor Workshop. A workspace is basically a single team with a list of projects. So I'll show you on this Asana help article. Here you are, the workspace is here. It's sort of one team of people. You can have multiple projects and multiple tasks within those projects. It's the simplest type of account that you can have. The alternative to creating a workspace is to create an organization, which is, as the name suggests, it's much more suitable for companies and organizations. The only difference really is that organizations can contain multiple teams. It's almost like multiple workspaces. So here we are, there's the organization. You could have a team for your marketing people, a team for your finance or design team, whatever it might be. Within each of these teams then, you can have multiple projects and tasks, tasks within each project. And finally, I'll point out that the organization is uh, defined by the company email address. So if you sign up with the uh, uh, domain name, you know, um, at website.com, Everyone with that email address at website.com would be set up as what's called a member. They're actually part of the organization. Anyone without that email address that's added to the account is set up as a guest. So they're not actually part of the organization. They are just a guest to the account. They can still add tasks and create projects, but there's certain privileges that they won't have. So that's the basics uh, of sort of the two different types of accounts that you can start with. In summary, workspace is great for personal accounts or small teams, you know, small little companies. Organizations are more suitable for bigger companies, bigger teams where you need to manage a few more people. So here we are. I'm in my workspace. You can see here's the team members on the left. It's actually just me right now. I could invite more people in here when I'm ready. And now the first thing I recommend doing is, is starting to create a few projects for the things that you're working on. So in a business context, I recommend creating a few projects almost for the different departments of your business. So maybe I'm gonna create a project called administration. I'm gonna set this up as a list. You could also set it up as a board as well. A board, uh, these are just two different view layouts. Um, boards will be, anyone familiar with Trello may favor the board view. And I'm just gonna set this to be public to everyone in this workspace, which is actually just me right now anyway. So I'm gonna create this, uh, this project. This is gonna be for managing all of the administrative tasks that I'm working on. The next thing I want to do now that I'm in this project is create some sections. Now sections are sort of like the visual headings that you can use to organize your tasks. So maybe I'm going to have a heading for accounting. And to create a heading, I just add a colon at the end. So by adding that colon, it automatically formats it bold and adds a line in there to create a heading. So I'm going to create a couple of sections. Uh, so we'll have accounting. Let's have uh, human resources and we'll have um, something like a social committee. Okay, so those are my three sections. Now that I've got those sections, I can hit enter to go onto a new line and I can type the name of my task. So I could say something like, you know, pay monthly bills, and there it is. And you can see as I'm, as I'm clicking around Asana and creating these tasks, the task panel on the right hand side here is updating. Now the most important thing to do would be to assign this to someone. So in this case, I'll just assign it to myself. I can give it a due date. Maybe I'm gonna do that tomorrow. And um, I can add subtasks here if I need to and break this down into a few smaller tasks. I won't bother with that right now. I can even add attachments and I can add uh, a description here, add a lot more information about the task. Let me create another one here. 
uh, let's say pay monthly salaries. <clears throat> so another place that I could assign it if I didn't want to click up here, I could just click down here and assign to me. I'll do that at the end of the month. So here we go. I've got a here we have the very uh, starting basics of a project. We've got the project is all administration tasks. We've got sections for the different types of tasks and a few tasks to get started with. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can view this project. I could sort these tasks by due date if I wanted. I could sort them by assignee. And I can present these tasks in lots of different ways. By default, they'll just be sorted by, by none. There'll be no sorting option, in which case you just get to view them in these sections. Along the top here, you've got different uh, different parts of the project. You've got an area for conversations, for discussing this project with your teammates. You've got a calendar for viewing all of the tasks in a calendar view. And I can actually click and drag to update the due dates of these tasks very quickly. I could even create a task right here as well. Uh, so let's say plan social events. And I'm going to assign that to myself. And I can even add it to a section from here as well. So I'll add that to the social committee. We have a progress tab, which is where the project owner can post updates about this project to the team. So you could set a status color and you could post an update about how the project is going. And then finally, a files tab for viewing uh, from, from tasks in this project. So there we are. This is my this is my first project. And when getting started with Asana, I generally recommend spending some time setting up a couple of projects like this. So I've got one for administration and then and then really just mind dumping all of the things that you need to do for that project. Now, this project is what I would call a primary or an evergreen project. So administration, it's not really a project that's ever going to come to an end. It's going to be sort of an ongoing project that continues to exist. And that's, in my opinion, one of the best ways to start to set up your account is with these sort of evergreen projects. Um, a lot of people get overwhelmed and have lots of projects on the left here, and this sidebar, side, sidebar can get quite busy and overwhelmed very quickly. And so to mitigate that, setting up these sort of evergreen projects can be a way of just keeping the list tidy. Now you could create a like a temporary project, like an actual project. So let's say I have a product launch. Let's say I'm launching uh, an iPhone, the iPhone, <laughs> iPhone launch. I'm going to create that now. I'm going to have all my tasks in here, you know, <clears throat> plan keynote. I need to uh, uh, update the website. Blah, 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 all the things they need to do. Then when, so this, this would be like a temporary project that is going to sort of come to an end. Once the product's launched, it's going to, it's going to be over. What I would then do at that stage is I can actually archive this project. I, I would always recommend archiving versus deleting. What archiving does, if I do that now, is it sort of uh, hides the project from the sidebar on the left here without getting rid of it. So you can see I've got this new show archived projects menu. I can click that. And I can always view the archive projects and even recover them if, if I need to. So those are the two different types of projects that you'll generally need to create is sort of your temporary like campaigns, temporary projects that you're working on, product launches, marketing campaigns, you know, goals that you're working on, that kind of thing. And then you'll have these more evergreen ongoing projects. And so to get started, I recommend just setting up a few different projects, a few primary evergreen projects, a few different camp, um, temporary projects that you're maybe working on, and just mind dumping and going through the process of creating the sections and some tasks that you need to work on. As you assign tasks to yourself in Asana, uh, you will, or if other people are assigning them to you for that matter, they will all appear on the My Tasks screen up here. Now the My Tasks page shows you anything assigned to you. So actually, let's go back to that iPhone launch and let's... Uh, let's assign these to me as well. And just to make the tasks a little bit more obvious, I'll give these projects a color. So I'm going to set the iPhone launch project to red and the admin project to green. And now when I go back to my tasks, you can see these are the different tasks and I can clearly see by those colors as well the projects that each of those tasks live in. Now, the most important thing to do when you have um, when you get to this screen, these are all sitting in the new task section right now. I need to actually sort them into a couple of sections. So this one that's due today, I'm going to click this little blue dot and I'm going to mark it for today. And you can see this new section appears down here. I have a couple more due kind of in the next week or so. So I'm going to mark this one for upcoming. September 29th, that's a little while away, so I'll mark that for later. These two don't really have due dates. So I'm just going to mark those for upcoming now as well. 
Now this later section down here is collapsed by default. It actually will hide those later items for you so you don't need to worry about them. But the nice thing is, is that a week away from being due, this task here, pay monthly salaries, will move up into upcoming, one week from being due. And then on the day it actually falls due, it will automatically move up into my today section. So when I open up Asana first thing in the morning, I've got a nice list of tasks that I need to start working on. Now taking advantage of this screen and using the today upcoming and later sections is one of the best ways to keep on top of your tasks and stay more organized as you're using Asana. It's one of the, I, what I see as being one of the more neglected screens when people get started. They spend time setting up their projects and actually forget or don't know to actually go into these, this My Task page and organize things. So that would be the two main things I would work on when getting started with your brand new account is just creating the different projects that you need to work on. Remember, trying to be concise about the number of projects you're trying to manage by using these evergreen primary projects for almost like the departments of your business, or if you're planning personal projects, these might be like areas of responsibility, or almost like categories, you know, like fitness or home. You know, these are evergreen projects that are not really gonna expire. In saying that, you can have some evergreen projects, uh, some, some more temporary projects as well for the, the campaigns or the goals that you're working on. So that's step one. And then when you've, when you've got those uh, projects planned and you've assigned some tasks to yourself or to your team members, come into this My Tasks page and you can start to organize them into these three sections. So there you have it. Those would be the absolute basics that I would recommend you focus on when getting started. If you want to learn more, uh, more advanced tips and strategies for using Asana, then please check out the other videos on my channel. If you want some one-on-one -on -one support, then please consider booking a complimentary uh, introductory call with me. And if you have any questions about Asana, please feel free to comment below this video. And thanks very much for watching.